Hi guys, morning. Again, my favorite place to do my walk around videos now. <laughs> Honda HRV hybrid. And um, now let's do. Do I still need to do walk around video? I mean, all your neighbors have one. <laughs> um, are there any styling differences? Well, the hybrid, it has the same spec as the low spec. HRV, okay. So it's priced at 120,000 ringgit. Uh, it has a projector, halogen projector. Uh, no LED lights. The LED lights only comes with the RS variant, which is the top spec, which is 4,000 ringgit more than the hybrid. But that one doesn't have hybrid. That one is the 1.8 liter uh, regular engine that you get with the uh, HRV. The HRV, HRV has been such a revelation when it was introduced in, into Malaysia. It has a very sleek styling. It has the right height of an SUV, even though it's just front-wheel drive. Uh, I've said it many times, you don't need four-wheel drive when the right height uh, raises up. A lot of wrong um, arguments out there saying that, oh, because the right height is taller, you need four-wheel drive to be more stable. No, that, that, that has nothing to do with whether you need four-wheel drive or not, all right? Um, it has the hidden rear door handles. Look at that. Instead of having a door handle here, which makes the car very stylish. And uh, the only reason that people don't feel it's so stylish now is only because it's so ubiquitous out there, but it's a good-looking car, all right? And then when it comes to the tail, um, that's the tail end design. Uh, some people go and change the tail end design with those from another market. I forgot what, what was that called. All right. So it has a huge boot. Okay. A very large boot for its size. Of course, the hybrid you don't get the uh, the additional storage, the deep boot that you get with the regular one. You know, it's just a small compartment over here, and then the battery sits down there. So in all essence, I believe this car was designed from the onset to have a hybrid variant, I believe. Uh, because unlike 5 Series or E-Class, having a battery impedes into your compartment. So the hybrid actually has a smaller boot in that sense. All right, The regular ones, the, the boot is just absolutely humongous. This seems very clever at the first place. All right, but it's a very low-cost solution from Honda that serves its purpose, but over time this thing will drab down. All right, uh, very easy to store it, just like your window uh, blind, those removable type, and then you have even have these flaps. Very thoughtful of Honda here to have these flaps where, where when you drop the seats, the flaps actually fill up to to make it a smooth surface for you to slide your things in and then when I take this out you look at how massive it is again like I mentioned just now cars like these spells the demise of sedans because of how practical they are okay, I, I can't do this with one hand because it it, it, it is very very flexible all right in every measure this is a small car in every single measure it is not a big car but Honda being Honda they are masters of interior packaging masters of unique seat look at that every car maker should buy a Honda and see how they design their seat mechanisms and steal it all right very very clever car maker when it comes to interior packaging even European car makers um, you know, BMWs and Mercedes now, they all have been trying to build practical cars with more practical and functional interiors. They need to look at what Honda is doing. Look at that. It's not a big car, but I get very decent knee room, very nice leg room. My size 11 feet has so much room in between the seat base and the railings of the front seat. All right, look at that. I have size 11 shoes. Look at that. All right, and the center tunnel is relatively flat so that the, the middle passenger, but this is pretty raised, huh? This is pretty raised. The middle passenger actually can sit. 
Okay. And uh, this thing is on at the at, on your back, so the only thing that makes you feel uncomfortable at the back seats is because the seats itself is actually pretty small. Okay, and you need to raise this in order to sit comfortably because it's at the base of your neck, and it makes you want to pull it up, but you can't pull it up without pressing the little button. This is the only thing that makes it. See, I can't. By right, it should be a mechanism whereby I can pull up, but I need to press the thing to, to slot it down. So, and I get headroom. Even though it has a sloping roof line, I get like a palm of headroom. Very clever packaging. The way they do it. Um, you have some leather look like materials here. See, Again, this is the same thing when I remember I said this when I first reviewed this car, right? All these door panels are soft touch. All of them are soft touch. Look at that. It's very comfortable. Even here. So the entire surface all the way here, all these are soft touch materials. The, the touch points. And even these door bins, you don't have any sharp edges. Very small door bin, huh? We could have. Um, but because they, they put it in, it's the same color as all the plastic panels in the car, it makes it feel drabbier than it should be. <laughs> Is that a, even a word? Alright, so the seats are pretty upright actually, and pretty small actually, so that gives you the perception of space. Uh, but they are very smart. It helps when you want to sell your car and people come into the showroom, go into the car and feel immediately feel, wow, okay. Now, make no mistake, this is not a C-segment car. You don't get power seats. It's all manual, but I'm fine with that. Um, this one I'm not fine with. Um, this is wasted opportunity. It could have been a larger door bin to serve its practicality, uh, to be practical. All right, you see again, all these are soft touch material. Very nice material to touch, smooth and nice. These are not, but high quality, non-scratchy plastics. Okay, you have an econ button over here, traction control, the beeping, off the beeping, adjust your headlamp up and down. Here's the fuel cap, release, and the bonnet. Remember the day I mentioned that the Elantra's levers, the two little levers over here, feels very 90s yeah this is how car makers are doing it now all right here you have a stylish center console again because it's because it's, it's one color you know actually Honda did introduce the white color interior which looks absolutely fantastic the ones with white color over here white color there and but Malaysians being Malaysian um, we're always afraid that we might dirty the car so that it doesn't look good anymore so we decided to not look good at the first place. Malaysians, I would go for the white leather anytime. All right, paddle shifters over here, uh, decent, lovely steering wheel. You have proper buttons for your phone calls, all right? Proper, everything is proper, very easy to press and touch. Uh, the gear stocks are high quality as well, not the cheapo type where you have a hole and then the whole thing goes in, you know. So everything feels really nice. This is absolute crap. Okay, uh, these are the aircon controls, and here you have the little lever that only comes with the hybrid, and then this entire floating console is. It looks, it looks as if it is style over substance at the first place, but the moment you fiddle with it, sorry, it's brilliant. It's another brilliant design from Honda. All right, fold this up. You get to put large bottles. You get dump your stuffs in there. And can I remove this? Is there a way to remove this? Maybe not, but nevertheless, it doesn't affect. See, when you do this, you can put your Starbucks Grande. Put this, your smaller Starbucks. And this is really tiny. Now, I've mentioned this in my other reviews as well. The width of the center console tells you the segment of the car. So it's a small car. This is a car with 
B segment proportions. But a C segment price and a C segment uh, equipment, technology, and space. Can't argue with that. Um, you don't get sun glass holder. You see, this whole roof is one cheap board. Uh, very common with Japanese car makers, they just make one board, the whole thing goes up. You know, it probably cost them like three ringgit or five ringgit to manufacture. Okay, like maybe 30 ringgit, I don't know. All right, so it feels like that. Uh, Korean cars don't even do that anymore, but Japanese cars are all like that. A lot of them, except Mazda, probably. Uh, these are nice. I think this car's propositioning is, I mean, a lot of ladies love this car. They should put a sunglass holder somewhere, but that adds cost. Okay, this feels high quality. All this feels high quality. You know, you don't get, uh, yeah, no lights, no lights. Um, aircon control vents are stylish as well. Uh, it makes you feel that you have more aircon, but <laughs> it's um, pretty nice. Decent. This one is touch panels. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. Um, I'm, I'm all right with that as long as it boots up quickly. You have a spot button over here, uh, electronic parking brake, and then the start button is here, which looks pretty upmarket, very nice. And then uh, okay, here, you get some compartments over here. No USB ports because the supplier of this is very smart. I help you to save costs. Maybe that's their proposition. You have the HDMI here, USB here, and it's always pretty hard to take this out. And, uh, yeah. That's how it goes. Let's hope I'm not wrong in saying that there are no USB ports. Nope. Only a 12 volt socket here. And you can put your stuffs down here. Rubberized mat over here. Alright. Very convenient, even though it doesn't look like it is. Okay. You can slot the phones here. Right, it looks as though it's not functional, but it's functional. Pretty nice. Uh, within our our Horizon team, there are two team members who drives an HRV. You just can't argue with this car, you know. Just, the engineers have thought through everything. Very, very clever car. And a decent build out here. Nice materials as well. Of course, these are not high quality leather seats. Huh? I look at the stitching. Uh, Japanese car makers need to improve on that. Um, but very likely it's locally sourced. But I know there are high quality local suppliers for leather seats. All right, there are a lot of quality suppliers. Let me try to try to do this with. Again, with it's not easy, but it's possible. Okay, Pekka leather and the sauce, they are they, they make high quality seats. All right, uh, third row seat belt mounted on the roof, pull it down from here. Sometimes it makes noise. Uh, there is a way to secure it, I believe. Ah, oh man, don't know how, and then. Isofix theater points for your child seat. It's down on the seat, but you have another to latch up here. Okay, that's the walk around of this car. A car that you can't argue with. Lovely tires, lovely comfort tires. Just now I was cornering uphill and all that. The Ultra Continental Ultra Contact UC6. Lovely tires. Okay, so should you buy the hybrid? To be completely honest, um, provided we stay in some in some crazy countries whereby fuel prices are very expensive, um, we we live in a country that is that has fuel prices that are crazy cheap. So the proposition of having a hybrid to save fuel is an argument that doesn't need to even be brought up in Malaysia at all. Uh, it just doesn't save you fuel because you could have bought the same car, the same spec with the 1.8 low spec, right? And um, 
Yes, hybrid gives you a different sensation, gives you some graphics that moves around when you go on throttle or off throttle, but the cost differences in that, you take a very long time to, to crawl back with your fuel saving. Eh? It's negligible, I would say it's negligible. And the whatever fuel saving that, that you get from choosing the hybrid will be negated when you want to sell your car because in the whole used car market, as long as you're a hybrid or a plug-in uh, hybrid, your resale value just plummets like crazy. Um, and this car is so ubiquitous out there that whenever you want to sell your car, you'll be fighting against the others. And I, I did a quick search, you know, a 2016 HRV, you're looking at losing about 40,000 ringgit. Uh, well, that's the realities of the market now. All right, so the HRV is a fantastic car, but the hybrid is not recommended. I wouldn't recommend anyone who is buying this segment to pick the hybrid. But Honda is Honda being Honda, they're very very smart. All right, uh, you can spend four thousand ringgit more and and get the highest spec RS variant, which has LED headlamps, Honda Lane Watch, uh, body kits, full leather interior, and the likes. A larger infotainment screen all right so that is the pick if you want to go full bore if not you just buy the lower spec same spec as this car and you save money and you save a lot more when you want to sell your car and the 1.8 liter engine gives enough push all right a keyless entry you can lock the car like that and then when you open the door just touch it oh sorry yeah and it opens right and they have a lot of accessory packages. There's one five thousand ringgit to buy body kits. Don't don't even go there. Don't don't spend that kind of money on on cars like these. All right, five thousand ringgit for body kits for this type of car is just expensive. Start the car. Yeah. So in the hybrid, you get stuffs like these, these. You know, uh, the promise of fuel saving. Yep. 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 I was mentioning this one looks crap just now. Yeah, it does look crap. Look at the interface, all right? And uh, it's simple. It's radio, Bluetooth, USB, HDMI, all right? It's not an infotainment system per se. It's just an entertainment system uh, that, that replaces ba uh, buttons with a touchscreen so that it looks more atas. Other than that, it doesn't serve any more function am fm usb bluetooth hdmi phone link phone you know settings um, on off beep tone adjust the screen it's a responsive screen but could have done better with the interface you know to, to maybe maybe honda can can ask a supplier to redesign the interface to have the same ci as their website or something i mean the honda has a fantastic website for browsing their cars right so other than <laughs> see, there's, there's nothing right there's nothing for you to play around with basically is but the benefit for Japanese car makers is a 2 din. so anytime the first thing I'll do if I buy this car I'm gonna throw this away and buy some new Android stuffs from China those are absolutely brilliant all right so uh, yep that's the walk around of this car again just to conclude it um, HRV is a fantastic car, but the hybrid, I would not recommend it for buyers of this segment. Um, do you, is, I mean, is there something wrong with the hybrid drivetrain? Is are hybrid drivetrains less reliable than petrol variants? Definitely, you have more components in there that talks to each other all the time, having to work with each other all the time, and uh, it will not be as reliable as your standard petrol variant. So anyone who's buying like a, like a, like a CT or Jazz or, or, or HRV, these type of uh, BC segment cars, everyday runabouts, you need to use them, you need them to be reliable, you need them to bring you to Kuantan and back Burleys, Johor JB the other day, and then just switch off the car, don't, don't even need to bother about it, the next morning go and switch it on and drive again. Do not pick the hybrid variants. Um, the price around the same, right? And maybe they get less spec, maybe they have a higher spec, but just get the normal petrol variant, right? I'm a hybrid owner, right? Provided this car has plug-in hybrid, 
with a larger battery at the back. Then that gives you a different dimension of ownership whereby you go home, you charge your car, you know, you just whizz out there and then you, you do your errands and then you come home and then you charge it again. That gives you another dimension of car ownership, um, which of course, after a few years, the batteries will be more expensive to replace if you want to replace them. And same thing, it gives you the kind of uh, scary resale value as well because it's a hybrid or plug-in hybrid. And are plug-in hybrids more complicated than hybrid? Of course. Less reliable? Of course. All right? The more components it takes in between all these things to move your wheels, there are more things to fail. Right? So, yeah. That's my conclusion. And, uh, and I've heard issues with uh, owners who bought. The, the ratio, let's not say all. Okay? There are a lot out there who... Their cars has been running fine for I mean for for multiple for multiple years, but there are also quite a higher number. Let's say the cluster of hybrids, all right. The ratio of failures is higher than the cluster of petrol engines. So um, for cars like these, nah, honest day-to-day -day cars, they're meant to serve you. They're meant to not cost you trouble, headache, money, and all that. Just buy the petrol variant. All right, just like how our colleagues did, they bought the petrol variant. All right, um, fantastic car, six airbags, blah blah blah. Everything spacious, comfortable, nice to drive, nice to cruise on the highway. Doesn't use a lot of fuel. Doesn't cost a lot of money to buy. It is fantastic. Still good looking. Yeah. Cheers. Okay. <clears throat> So, to give you a thorough conclusion, um, is this the car to buy if you have 120 over 1000 ringgit to splurge? Um, if you are asking me in absolute sense, right? For me, myself, this price point, 120 over 1000 ringgit, I have this money to splurge on something like this, I would go for the X70 still, alright? Um, but if you're telling me that I've made up my mind for an HRV, uh, which one should I go for? Definitely the 1.8 or the full spec, you know. Uh, for 4,000 ringgit more than the hybrid, you you don't get the hassle of, uh, or potential hassle of owning a hybrid. You get the LED lights, you get the lane watch, you get full leather, all that stuff is all right, okay? Another alternative choice that you can really go proper off-roading and do some exciting stuff with your life, uh, go long distance driving, go into the muds and all that, would be the Subaru XV, which I think the Subaru XV has the best NVH or on par with the X70. And I uh, just listened to this car at 130, 140, you can hear all that because it is, at the end of the day, it's still a BC segment Japanese car has little soundproofing, uh, a lot of road noise, wind noise impeding in. Uh, it's still that kind of a driving experience as if you had a Honda City, you know, or a Vios or a Yaris. It still feels like a B7 car when you're on the highway. Um, but if you ask me, I mean, is there huge flaws with this car? No. It's just that for that money, if you're able to to, to enjoy yourself in the kind of ambience and the kind of environment like what an X70 gives you which is very European car solid build quality fit and finish Napa leather all that I mean I can't argue with that that kind of luxurious feeling there's zero luxurious feeling in an HRV in an HRV or an XV for that matter but XV has a very good NVH ride comfort but the X70 gives you that kind of sensation of wow, I've made it in life, you know, they, it gives you that kind of impression. So that's why I would say for the price, I would go for that, but... That's it! Uh, this guy is a lot nicer. Just how that lady was like, early morning duck face. Anyway. Yeah. But if you bought this car, did you bought the wrong car? No, 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 no. It's alright. It's perfectly alright. And the Hondas comes with uh, the, what, unlimited mileage, five-year warranty, 
but the hybrid has a 100k mileage or something like that and then uh, free six times of labor cost service that means they still charge you for service but then labor is waived which is all right but it's only six times which is reasonable um, other than that yeah so when, if, you, if you are definitely buying an HRV uh, first thing you should do is to okay sorry just checking first thing I would do if I buy, bought an HRV I would throw away the infotainment screen or whatever uh, is it's just crap I'll buy some Android stuff there and uh, it, would, it would be so much better and then um, I won't go for the hybrid yep and uh, don't buy those modulo package or whatever 5000 ringgit body kit nonsense don't don't go for those all right that's about it cheers